I was uh, deceived, deceived myself thinking that I was 18 instead of 45 and didn't stretch and do all those things. And now I'm paying the consequences for it. But it was fun nonetheless. And so, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. And for those of uh, you who may be joining with us for the first time, we are in a series called um, Being Godly in Godless Times. So that's been the series we've been on, uh, Being Godly in Godless Times. And so, um, yeah, we want to talk about that um, a little further. And so, and those of you who, you know, like I said, it's the first time hearing it, uh, we have a YouTube uh, page, New Image Live. So if you want to look at it later, or you can look at our New Image uh, website. Uh, but the purpose of this is to share the gospel, is to uh, follow Jesus' commandment where he says to go into all the world, baptizing, making uh, nation disciples, focusing on the things that he taught, right? And so that's our uh, that's our goal. That's what we pray uh, for. That's what we feel God has called us to. And so, yeah, let's get started. So if you are in your Bible, uh, turn to uh, Titus chapter 1, verse 10. Or you can turn, flip, scroll, however way you are doing it. And so as you're doing it, I just want to um, just make sure everything is working. Um, so if you post a comment like uh, a good afternoon or something, I just want to make sure things are working. Um, yeah, make sure things are working on here. Um, so it's not working on there. I didn't see it. You didn't see it? Okay. So I'll post it up later. All right, cool. Thank you. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, again, that scripture is uh, Titus chapter 1, verse 10, and uh, through uh, 16. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. And uh, like I said, if you would join with me. And we just pray, Lord God, that you would use this time, that you would speak. Um, through this mouth, Lord God, that you will use these lips to proclaim your truth. Holy Spirit, we know that you are the teacher. You're the one who brings revelation to Jesus and uh, who we are in him and what you want us to do. You're the one who knows what the on-time word is. And so I'm praying in Jesus' name uh, that God has his way. Amen. All right, let's roll. Uh, Titus chapter 1, verse 10, he says, For there are many insubordinate. Uh, you know what? Before I read it, let me kind of tell you, those of you, especially if you haven't watched the last one, um, in the, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about um, leadership material and Titus, oh, no, excuse me, Paul is talking to his uh, co-worker in the gospel, Titus, about uh, finding leaders, finding leaders in the island of Crete. And Crete, again, was a community or I would say a culture that was anti-Christ, anti-God. Everything that God said to do, they practiced. Said not to do, they practiced. And so they were in an environment that was not uh, friendly to the kingdom of God, what God was trying to do. So God was raising up believers, people who proclaimed Jesus as their king and Lord, and communities where they're worshiping Jesus as the head of the church. However, they're in the midst of people who are in cultures and even in their own mindset of practices and ways of thinking that was outside of God's will, right? And so those last couple of weeks, we were talking about things to look for, leadership to look for. Not only am I looking outside for qualities and different things like that, or someone who's um, blameless, someone who loves God. So not only am I looking for those people um, outside, but I have to be that type of person. So about, number one, you and I practicing, uh, I don't want to say practicing, but following God, loving God with everything we have. And in loving God, Jesus says that we love him by doing the things he's told us to do. And so that's what Titus, uh, Paul was telling Titus, he said, look for people who love God. They're blameless husband of one wife. Um, they're, they're not out of control. I'm talking about a consistent lifestyle. Not saying perfect, but someone who is growing and maturing in the things of God. And so this week, we are talking about things that 
things that to look out for. So before we talk about things to look for, this is what we need to look out for within ourselves and also the people that we allow into our space. And so for there, for verse 10, he says, for there are many insubordinate. What does insubordinate mean? It's someone who is rebellious, both idle talkers. And if you want to say empty talkers, deceivers, especially those of the circumcision. And this is the context of Paul's day. There was a group of uh, people who were uh, of Jewish descent, but they weren't acknowledging Jesus. They had their own way of practicing uh, or worshiping God. He says, whose mouths must be stopped. He says, so these people who are rebellious, these people who are uh, empty talkers, these deceivers, he says, they must be stopped. And he says, who subvert uh, or just come in and kind of wreak havoc in households. So not only is what they're saying and the influence that they're having, not only is hurting people individually, but is wrecking households. He says that that's why they must be stopped. He says they're teaching things which they ought not. He said for the sake of this honest gain. So he's saying there's these deceivers, there's these people who are going around sharing messages, practicing different things, but it's going against the things that God wants. And he says they must be stopped. And he said that there are they are wrecking households. They are tearing up families uh, by their perverse teachings and the things that they should not teach. He said, but their motive is for a dishonest gain. And so if you're... <laughs> If you're trying to appeal, okay, let me let me go back up a little bit. So this honest gain, what does this honest gain look like? I'm talk, it's talking about motives. And a lot of times when we read that this honest gain, we think about money. And yeah, people will preach, <laughs> write books, uh, post videos just to gain finance, finances, not necessarily to help people. Not only uh, the seek the this honest gain look like not only taking people's money, but it's also uh, saying things and doing things to gain approval. Uh, in our social media world, people are looking for likes. People are looking to be known, and so this honest gain meaning these they're doing different things, practicing and teaching whatever just to gain for themselves. They say these are people that we have to look out for. Number one, we have to make sure it's not us. <laughs> Amen? Amen. That, number one, that's what we need to look out for. Then it says, verse 12, one of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, so they don't tell the truth. Evil beasts, lazy gluttons, they, he didn't, yeah, he let them have it, right? He said, this testimony is true. He says, therefore, how we stop them, he says, rebuke them sharply. Correct them, that they may be sound in the faith. He says, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men who turn from the truth. Uh, Timothy talks about this in the book of Timothy. It talks about this where people are uh, having disputes and stuff over genealogies and different things. Things that would distract people from the true faith in Jesus Christ. So they're doing fables, they're creating commandments of people, um, and like I said, in Titus, it talks about, they're talking about genealogies and where people came from and all that. But the objective is to turn people from the truth and the true and living God. Then he says, verse 15, he says, to the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and conscience are defiled. So you can hear people say things, like I said, on YouTube, the news, different me uh, means of media, books and all that. And it's like they have no conscience uh, because they're deceived. And so not only are they deceived, but they're spreading deception. And then here we go, verse 16. He says, they, they, they may even do this. They may 
prof they profess to know God, but in their works they deny Him, being abom abominable, disobedient, disqualified for every good work. He says, that, so not only are the <laughs> things that they're saying is empty, but because their beliefs are empty, their practices is empty as well. He said, because they profess to know God, but their works deny him. And so you think, see different religions and cults and sects and different uh, groups of people where they feel like everybody is like, yeah, this is the truth here. No, we have the truth over here. But one thing about it, and I would say this is things to look for. Empty beliefs produces an uh, empty life. When someone is deceived, deceived, it's going to show up in their lives. And so if they're proclaiming truth and saying, oh, we're the group that have it or uh, we're the group that have it. But if there's no evidence of a changed life, then what they're practicing and preaching is empty. So that's why you and I in 2021 have to be really careful so we can guard our own souls, guard our own heart, so that we won't get caught up in deception. And then verse, uh, because Titus is a letter, I'm going to go to uh, Titus 2 and 1. He says, but as for you, here we go. And I'm, 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 I'm acknowledging it as for me, as a, a teacher of the word and a pastor. But I'm saying for you to take this next verse for yourself as well. And he says, but as for you, speak the things that are proper for sound doctrine. And so whatever I proclaim is going to be in proclaim and share. Uh, it has to be a sound doctrine, meaning that we, you and I who serve Jesus Christ, who are following after him, the, our lifestyle has to reflect what we believe, that Jesus is truly our King, truly our Savior, truly our Lord, then if I'm allowing him to be Lord of my life, then there should be some sign. There should be something about my life. Not that we're perfect, but that it shows evidence that I am walking in the truth. Because like I said, when you know false doctrine or false teaching or false influence or false information, there is no fruit in it. There's nothing. Um, <laughs> it makes false promises, but uh, but it delivers things that are empty. Amen. We'll go into that a little bit more. And so today's and we're like I said, we're in our series um, being godly and godless times. Um, this thought came to me and I, I want to go ahead and share it with you. And so it's tactical tricks. Tactical tricks. And what does it mean by having a tactical trick? Tactical trick is a deceitful and carefully planned strategies to gain a specific military end. Your destruction. I'm going to say that again. I blended uh, Webster and Lavelle in this, in this definition. <laughs> it's a tactical trick from the enemy. The enemy of our souls, the God of this world, Satan, Lucifer, the accuser of the brethren, his strategy has always been deceitful, careful, because he's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so deceitful, careful, planned strategies to gain specific military end. What is his strategy? He wants to destroy you and I. In order to get to God, he's trying to get to the ones he created in his image and after his likeness. And so in this time, let me, put, let me do this. You and I, as people who have acknowledged Jesus as our Lord, for truly acknowledge Jesus as our Lord, we are in the we are in his army. We're in his family. <laughs> We are, um, in Psalms 10, he says, we're the sheep of his pasture. He claimed us as his own. 
But one thing about being a believer, you have to also realize that you are in warfare. This is a war that we're in. Um, 2 Timothy 2 and 4 says, and this is reading out the Passion Translation. He says, for every soldier called to active duty must divorce himself from the distractions of this world so that he may fully satisfy the one who chose him. I'm going to read this again. Now, put you in this put you in this verse. For every soldier, me, you, called to active duty, so we're not here to just take up space, must divorce himself or herself from the distractions of this world, so that he or she may fully satisfy the one who chose them. And so again, this is to remind us two things, that if we accepted Jesus, we are his family, we are in his army, and we have an enemy that means our destruction. So that means that um, we are in the world, we've been called by God, we're the family of God, but yet in this world we have an enemy. And one of the things that he desires to do is to distract us and to deceive us so that we cannot show up. What do you mean by show up? So we won't show up and be the people that God has created us to be. Thank you, Jesus. Because God has a plan for our lives. He created us in his image. He, he uh, shed his blood for us and he sealed us with his spirit. So we're not here just to take up space. <laughs> we're here for his kingdom. We're here to show forth his glory. And so when our enemy or I would say already defeated enemy if he can try if he can't kill us he will try to neutralize us he will try to distract us from God and eventually deceive us out of our faith so one of the things that I wanted to bring up uh, I would say the main point I want to bring up is that we have to get we have to be really careful uh, and I'm not talking about anxious and that like that but we can't take our relationship with God who we are in God and the influence that he's given us to have for granted I was really grieved and I'm hearing this even more so especially this past year how there are people who have walked with Jesus come to the point and say that he doesn't exist. Basically denounce Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. However, they, like I said, they wrote books about him. They talked about him. They preached about him. There's people in my own life have brought me to the Lord, have influenced and have denounced so my, the point I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to address is that we can't be casual in these times, especially when it comes to the things that we are allowed to, to happen into our heart. The things that we listen to are the people that we have. We have to be really careful. And I'm not talking about being scary, but I'm talking about really valuing our relationship with God so that we're not allowing any information or influences that would just turn me away from him. And then we could get to the point of like, well, that would never happen to me. But we don't want to ever give the enemy space to bring deception into our life. And so uh, one thing I wanted to point out, like I said, when, when I believe the Holy Spirit was putting this on my heart, uh, he took me to Solomon, King Solomon. Uh, Solomon, if you would go with me yet yeah, to 1 Kings 9, I think about King Solomon. Now, David was, uh, Solomon is David's son, one of David's sons. So Solomon was the king after him. And so Solomon came at a really good place because um uh, I'll give you an example. David wanted to build the temple for, for God. He wanted um, to do it. 
And so God told him, no. So one of the reasons, because he had too much blood on his hands, David was a man of war, right? Uh, man after God's own heart, but because God is a holy God, he has certain standards, right, in, in the things of God. And so he said, but you, like basically David created the plan, but he gave it to Solomon to build. So he, you know, he passed on that legacy. And what an honor, right? Is that he gets to, under his watch, he gets to build the temple of God. And God get they got the 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 map or the, the blueprint and all that. So he was able to build it. He built it. He built his own house. And uh, it was a, it was good times. And in and and in that part of his life, there was peace. Though he didn't have to go to war and stuff. There was a lot of peace at that time. And so even in the beginning of his reign, he was asked God for wisdom. He was like, you know, he could ask God for different things, but God said, but he asked God for wisdom, how to go in and how to go out among the people. And so God, he was like, wow, you didn't ask for nothing else. You asked for wisdom. He was like, not only that, he got wisdom, but he got, you know, the finances, the, the property. He got all the other things that he didn't even ask for. So God is blessing uh, Saul. He's blessing him. Things are going perfect. But then, but then right after they, uh, Solomon built this temple, this is what God tells him in uh, verse uh, chapter 9 of 1 Kings and 4. He says, now, if you walk before me as your father David walked in integrity of heart and a rightness, and to do according to all that I command you. And if you keep now, you say, now let's keep this up. He says, if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever. As promised David, as I promised David, your father saying, you shall not fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. So this is a promise passed on from his father. He says, but here comes the but. But if you and your sons all turn from following me and do not keep my commandments and my statutes, what I said before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land, which I've given them in this house, which I've consecrated from my name. I would cast out of my sight. Israel will be a proverb and a byword among all the people. So what God is telling, telling Solomon, he says, now, if you continue following me, not only will you be blessed, but, you know, the, the kingdom will it'll, it'll be perfect. The kingdom, your, your, your sons, your children will continue to reign. He says, but he said, if you stop following me and you turn your heart turns to following other gods and other things then Israel will be cut off and so one thing about a loving God because he there is judgment right he is a holy God but yet he's loving so anytime anytime he knows things about to happen he always gives us warnings so this message may be a warning to somebody Amen. Because he loves. And so a lot of times when people are experiencing the consequences of not following God and turning away from him, then they believe, well, if God is so good, why is this happening? No, he was good. No, he was trying to stop it from happening. Right? And so that's part of the deception where it, the enemy, one thing about in military, one of the things they go after first is communication. So if he can get you and I away from really hearing from God and turning our hearts away from him, it's like we're easy pickings. He got us. Because our safety is in God. Our safety is in following God. Amen? And then let's go to uh, 1 Kings 11 and 1. Um, so David, no, no, Solomon, Solomon is doing good. But then here it comes. First Kings 11 and 1. He says, but King Solomon loved many foreign women. <laughs> There's always a but, right? 
So things are going well. Things are going good for Solomon and Israel. But I think, and this is my own thoughts, I believe like with other people, and it happens today, we get so comfortable to where we're not guarding our heart and we allow our hearts to turn. We get complacent. The scripture says that even in the last days, people's hearts will grow wax cold. The love of men will wax cold. I believe that's when we become vulnerable to following up, vulnerable to turning our heart from God because it doesn't happen overnight. I believe it happens when we become lax. Now, when I say lax or relaxed, I'm not talking about the rest of God, <laughs> the resting in the Lord. I'm talking about that because it's in the Lord. But we get so comfortable to where we're taking the very things that God says to do and we treat it as if it's optional. Where I take what God commanded me to do and I make it optional. Okay, let, let's start, let, let's go with one of the commandments that God said that we, you know, we, um, what are the hard ones? Let's start with the hard one. He says, love your enemy. Pray for those who despitefully hurt you, abuse you. Um, I don't want to, I just, I just kind of murdered that scripture, but what basically says, love your enemy, pray for those. There you go. Pray for them. That's a commandment. That's what he says to do. And then he says, if you love me, you're going to do what? What I told you to do. But then we say, okay, and, and I'm not talking about staying in an abusive relationship or nothing like that. So don't let the enemy sow that crazy seed into your mind because he wants you to be safe. I'm talking about if somebody hurt you or said something wrong to you. And so instead of choosing God's way, you like, okay, I'm going to get them back. They posted something crazy about me subtly. I'm going to post something crazy about them subtly. Uh, tit for tat, right? Back and forth. Revenge, revenge. But the God that we say is our King and Lord, he tells me to pray for that person. And that might be the only action required is to pray for them. Because I, see, one thing about God, he knows what he's doing. If we just follow him, we'll be okay. Moments and seasons where God made sure, told me to love people and when per, people will hurt me or whatever, to, re, to respond by praying for them. And I kid you not, he does it <laughs> when we follow him. He can make peace. He'll have peace come into our life and where we're not walking in bitterness and we're not walking in revenge. Right. But that's an example of when God tells you to do something. We don't we can't treat it as an option. That's what he said to do. He says, love God with all of your heart, mind, soul and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Then later on, he says, love, love one another like you love me. These, and he says, all this is the commandments that everything else uh, hangs on. But yet we can get so complacent until we treat it as, uh, he didn't really mean that. Now we won't say that, of course, but we like, oh, okay, well. And then the Holy Spirit is like being grieved and he's tugging us and be like, no, I need, you need, you need to pray for that person. You need to, don't talk about them. Don't, don't post about them. Don't, don't have a family meeting about that person. I want you to pray for them. But yet I can get so casual with God that I just ignore it and not do it. These are things that we have to be careful of because it, deception can start off slow. And if I'm, if I refuse to follow God in one area, it can cause me to stop acknowledging him and honor him in other areas. So for example, the Bible says to praise the Lord. So I'll, I'll worship, I'll sing, I'll dance. I'm like, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. But then he says, I, I want you to pray for those who, who hurt you. Now on one end, I'm obedient, I'm worshiping, I'm singing. <laughs> but on the other end, I'm disrespecting him because I choose not to do what he says. Now, 
I'm, I'm talking about this is real people. This is real family. Because if I get lax in one area, I could get lax in other areas. I hope that made sense. He said, but King Solomon loved many foreign women. So he's comfortable, but the door is open. He, he, that, that, uh, like Vince said, that's his candy bar was the women's, the women's. <laughs> but not only he loved one, he says he loved many. And so um, I don't think it's in, oh yeah, it's in this verse. He says, as well as the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Am Amorites, Edomites, uh, Sionites, Hittites, all the ites. So he, <laughs> he, remember that song? I'm not going to say the whole title, but he had them all in different area codes. Area codes. Mm -hmm. he, had them, he had them all over the place. So this world would be like, man, you know, Solomon had all the women, but man, there's consequences. Verse 2 said, for the nations of whom the Lord had said. Now, it's crazy. He went to the very nations that the Lord told him. He said, you should not intermarry with them, nor they with you. And let me put, speak on this really quick for somebody who may be deceived in their mind. Intermarrying does not mean where, you know, a black man can't marry a white woman. Uh, the, the one guy pointed out to me would be my wife. She is, and she happened to be white on the outside. I happen to be black on the outside and Hispanic and Spanish and all that, Indian, Seminole Indian, all that. So he's not talking about that. He's talking about the nations because the nations that he's pointing out were nations or cultures of people who was not following God. They were worshiping, and we're going to get into it in a minute, and I'm going to try to speed it up a bit. They were worshiping other, uh, other gods that basically be, their lifestyles of because they're worshiping other gods, the deception that they were having practices and way of living that was outside of the, the standard that the one and true only living God gave Israel because they were his chosen nation or is his chosen nation, right? So that's why he told them not to marry him. All right, just for those of you who take those scriptures and make it something that you want instead of what it's saying. He says, truly, they will, this is why, this is why he told him not to say, truly, they will turn away your hearts after their gods. So he said, Solomon clung to these in love. He, he did not want to let these women go. He had 700 wives. That is crazy. That's like a different wife for like, Every day for about about two years, and princesses, and th not only that. Let's add to it three hundred concubines. That's crazy. Think about it. That's what a thousand women. You know, I'm not great with math, but I, I think I could count that one. So he and, and let me put it like this. So without um, taking up too much time. Anytime he, every time he gave his heart to them individually, and a lot of times he was making covenants with other nations, which caused him to marry their daughters and stuff like that. That's part of the, you know, the culture of it. But look at what he opened himself, his self up to over a thousand different women. He opened up his heart to a thousand different women who, again, when we open up our hearts to different things, we're allowing their influences in our, into our heart as well. So this dude is vulnerable. He's very vulnerable for this tactical trick. And so I'm sure he was having sex with them and all that, which opened up any more doors because of soul ties and different things like that. In verse 4, he says, For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods. And his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God 
as it was the heart of his father, David. So one thing I want to bring up, like I said, and I'm going to try to move it up a little, try to move a little faster. He started off good, but I believe he got comfortable. And it didn't say this, they turned his heart from God, the true living God, to other gods, the things that God warned him. It didn't happen overnight. I believe it happened subtly because it says, you know, basically by the time he got of old age, he was, his heart was, he stopped being loyal to God. And so one of the other warnings we have to be careful of, because it didn't say that he denied the true and living God, he built a temple for him. But I believe what he tried to do is try to worship God and worship these other false gods. Try to live the lifestyle that God commanded for him and then try to live the lifestyle that was a demand of these pagan gods, which were demons that they were worshiping. Let me put it like this. We can't try to <laughs> say we love God, but practice lifestyles that's anti-God, anti-Christ. It doesn't work. I like what Joshua said. He told the Israelites when he took up leadership. And he basically said, we have a choice. Either you're going to serve God or not. And then he says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I believe that that's the commitment you and I have to make today and every day and every moment. I'm not saying that we're going to be perfect, but all I'm saying is that who am I going to have my total allegiance to? Because, you know, I believe a lot of us are guilty of trying to mix loving God and doing what I want to do at the same time. And it's not going to work. Especially when I'm doing things and making it a practice of doing things that God said he does not want, yet I keep doing it. Let me put it like this, because I don't want condemnation to hit nobody. I know how that spirit is. Even those areas in our life that's hard for us to change, we can't live this life in our own. That's why we have to go to God for it. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I'm talking about, but what I'm talking about is the individual who be like, well, God don't care. When you know he does, he does care who you sleep with. Amen. <laughs> I know that's one of the ones that it always, but man, look at Solomon. Look what happened to him because he was opening himself up. He does care how you treat people. He does care what you and I endorse. I'm going to go into that in just a second. So there's things he's, he cares about. That's why he wrote it down. That's why he had men and women uh, preach it. That's why he have the uh, God used men to write it down under the influence of the Holy Spirit because he means what he says because again, it's not a God who's trying to punish you and Keep fun away from you. He's inviting you into relationship, into a, a, a satisfied, fulfilled life. But if we don't follow him, these are consequences. Amen. Let me. Okay. I'm, I'm going to read this passage and uh, we're, we're almost done. He said, for Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zionites. After Milcom, the, uh, ab the abomination of the Ammonites. And when the Bible says abomination, that means they are doing things and practicing things that God hates. It's so anti-Christ, anti what God wants. He says Solomon did evil in the sight of God. And again, verse 6, he, and did not fully follow the Lord as his father David. And that's again, we leave the door open for the enemy to bring deception to our life where we don't totally make up our mind to truly follow God. 
And I'm talking about a moment-to-moment -moment daily decision to follow God. Yes, we fail. Yes, we sin. But I'm talking about the posture of my heart. Because like his father David, he did some crazy stuff. But he got up and, and moved forward in the things of God. Verse 7 says, Solomon built, not only did he worship them, he said, but he built a high place for uh, Ch Chemosh in the abomination of Moab on the hill in the east of Jerusalem and for Moloch, the abomination of the people of Amron. And he did likewise for all the foreign wives. He did it all for them because he gave their heart, his heart to them who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. I'm about to back up to that. So, so the Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned from the Lord God of Israel who had appeared to him twice and commanded him concerning these things. He said that you should not go after these other gods, but he did not keep what the Lord had commanded. So I'm saying that we have to make up our mind that we're going to truly follow the Lord Jesus Christ, that truly follow God, not following him when he's convenient but following him with, with the things that he want, because again, the things that he commanded us and for us, it's, he commanded it for our own sake. Because he loves us. But let me, let me back up to these, when these different, in the Bible is really, I love it, because these different, I, I studied some of these gods, and one of the common things about worshiping these gods which were basically demons as statues, what did they require? They required people to give up their sexuality. It, gave, it false, caused them to give up their very own children to sacrifice, to burn to these statues. People are, they were taking their babies, newborn babies, and throwing them into fire. This what Solomon, the king that God put on the, allowed to be on the throne after David, this is what he started practicing and allowing, still trying to serve the God of the true and living God. You and I, we can't mix it. We can't try to follow God and yet allow the world to deceive us into thinking, oh, this is fine. And think about these practices now. And, I, I'm, and I'm not being political. I'm trying to be biblical here. So anybody who's trying to be like, well, you're doing this. No, let's stick to the word. Right, left, <laughs> mass, no mass. Let's get, let's get back to following Jesus. Because sometimes we get, caught, we get so distracted by by political positions and stuff like that till we forget what God wants. Look, the world is still trying to kill babies. But then you also have people disrespecting nations of, and groups of people. Yet I'm following Jesus. No. We have to truly give our lives to God. And then we'll, uh, we'll allow the devil to distract us in such a way till we're fighting against each other. The very people God says to love like he loves you. Because when we don't, we allow division to come into our very homes, into our very churches, because, oh, he wore a mask or she don't wear a mask, but then that becomes a fight. Come on, somebody, wake up. Are we going to follow him or not? Thank you, Jesus. We can't let the enemy deceive us to where the very brother I said I love with everything I got, now I'm at war with him. Thank you, Jesus. It does, I'm sorry, it, it grieves my heart because there's people I know who worship God with me. But now they're into worshiping their ancestors. I'm sorry, I, maybe I should have held that one back. There's nobody else who died for us that we need, that we have, who else died for us? Who else gave his very own life that we should bow our knee to somebody else who didn't? 
I honor my ancestors. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate what they did. And the more I learn about it, the more I appreciate it. But yet, they weren't sinless and spotless in order to get me eternal life. So I can't bow my knee and worship in them. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. <laughs> I hope it's not coming off. I hope you hear the love in it. I hope you hear it. I hope you hear the love because I asked God before I opened my mouth and some of these, half of these things I didn't know I was going to say. But I asked God to, I want you to speak. That's why I tell him and that's why I have to trust him to do. He doesn't like for his children, the ones that he gave his life to, the ones that he called out of darkness, called out of crazy lifestyles into a family yet to act allow them to act like they're, they're, they're enemies with one another. Disrespectful. What you mean? Because that person, <laughs> I can't fellowship with you because maybe my opinion about masks or uh, a, a particular party or whatever is that going to get in the way of me loving you? God forbid. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We can't allow ourselves to be deceived. Not, it's too late in the game for us to give up now. Like I said earlier in the message, people who wrote books about God, wait till the last minute, wait till Jesus is about back <laughs> to stop and to say he doesn't, he doesn't exist or he's not truly the son of God. There's a quote that um, my brother Rossi said, and I'm about to close it. And I believe he, he was quoting uh, Franklin Covey, Covey. He says, but we got to keep the main thing, the main thing. I hear his voice every time that, that quote comes up. It's a tactical trick to get you and I caught up on minor issues where we ignore the major ones. What's major? Love God with everything you got heart, mind, soul, and strength. Because if I'm loving him with everything I got, I don't have room for nothing else to come in and turn my heart from him. What's the other main thing? Love your neighbor as yourself. John, I believe 13, 34, I believe. He says, love, it's a new commandment I give you. Love one another like I love you. That's how we keep from being deceived. When we give everything to God and love one another, not based on what I feel love is, but on the biblical, <laughs> what Jesus demonstrate love. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We got this, family. Let's say I was deceived. Yes, yes, I was maybe given over into a lifestyle that's not pleasing to God. It's not over. You said, <gasps> you're still alive. So the Bible says repent. What does that mean? It's just, it's turning our hearts back to God. <laughs> so the enemy may have turned our hearts in different areas that God, from, from what God wants, but you and I can by the help of the Holy Spirit, turn our hearts back to him. There's times in the week, God, is when I read certain scriptures and things, it's like, ooh, Lord, forgive me. Ooh, Lord, I, I, I shouldn't have thought about that person that way. It's because God has to check me all the time. Every time I open the word, I'm being checked. And so I'm not saying it from a position of arrival. I'm saying it from, from a position that we're all on the same journey. We have to look out for one another. I can't allow this world to taint my heart against God and against you. That's the ultimate tactic is to turn your heart from God. And then when I, if he turns our, if he turns our heart from God, 
then I'm going to be doing things and allowing things that's going to be hurtful and damaging to you. Hallelujah. So if we're, if we're feeling convicted like I am, it's like, Lord, help me in this area. Help me to see people the way you see them. Help me to see the, myself the way you see me. I'm, Lord, I'm not an outcast. I'm not a reject. I'm not, I'm not um, a, a last resort for you. I, I, you have chosen me. You are the, I'm the apple of your eye. Lord, help me to see myself the way you see me. So I won't tolerate things that you told me not to tolerate. I don't tolerate people abusing me and hurting me because I'm the apple of your eyes. Lord, I thank you for showing your people who they are in you, who you are. Hallelujah. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I come against strongholds in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I, I, if, if, if there's anything in this message that's hitting you, I want you to just put... Um, Put your hand over your heart or your heart or your mind. Your, but I, I just want to be in agreement with you. It has nothing to do with my prayer, but it's just about a way of contacting, having connection in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I, I, but I, I believe God is taking the blinders off of our eyes right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So your heart, your head, even your eyes, Lord, I, I uh, put your hands on them as a point of contact. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to see you, Jesus. Lord, open our eyes to see you more than what we have settled for, that we will truly see you for who you are. Hallelujah. Not what mankind said you are, but who you really are. Lord God, we acknowledge that we have blind spots. Hallelujah. We have blind spots about you, Jesus. There are certain things and behaviors that we're tolerating because we, we the, 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 the preacher said we could, but not you. Lord, open our hearts to the truth, God. We can't do this without you. We can't make it without you. We can't love you without you. We can't love one another without you. Lord, help us, God. Help us for the, for the relationships that we have Cut off, Lord God, because we weren't walking in love. Forgive us for the people we have hurt because we weren't following you, Lord God. Forgive us. Hallelujah. To help us, Lord God, to open our eyes so that we can truly love you. Truly receive the love that you have for us. And truly, Lord God, to, to, to love the people that's in front of us, the people in our very household, our spouses, Lord God, our sisters, our brothers, God, our children, Jesus. Lord, even for our children, Lord God, Lord, I'm asking you, forgive me, Lord God, for sometimes just being so busy with other stuff that I'm not spending time with them. Forgive me, God. Forgive me, Lord, and help me, Lord God, to be better. Lord God, forgive us for just allowing TV and computers to raise our kids and not us. Oh, God, help us, Jesus. Lord God, even the children you gave us are gifts. Help us, Lord God, to treat them as such. Lord God, we, won't, we don't want our children to be children of wrath, Lord God, that we allow wrath to come into them. They're angry because of what we did or did not do. Help us, Lord God. To raise them up, to love you, and to admonish you the very rest of their lives by the way we love on them, God. Help us, Jesus. That we won't sacrifice our children for careers. <laughs> to where our careers is more important than our kids. Hallelujah. For another relationship, help us not to sacrifice the time with our kids. Because of our own security, help us not, not to damage our, our kids and, and try to put them down and things like that. Lord, help us with our children, Jesus. Oh, God, help us, Lord. Help us to be people truly after your own image and after your own likeness. Help us, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we know that you don't send these messages and these words to condemn us, but it's so that we can be free. 
And the one you said you set uh, set free, we're free indeed. I thank you, Jesus, for forgiving us. Thank you for showing us how to do it better. Thank you for showing us and giving us the grace to be better. Thank you for another opportunity to restore those broken relationships. Thank you, for our Father God, for a clearness of mind to know um, to know what's being a distraction from you. Help us, God. I thank you. Whew, I'm glad, Lord God, that you're our shepherd. Even when we're going into a ditch, you take your rod and your staff and you comfort us. You bring us back. I thank you so much. It just, just like sheep, we can't take care of ourselves. We need the shepherd. We need you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, I give you glory and I give you praise. Amen. Amen. All right, family, that was a little different. <laughs> but um, I, pray, I just pray that you're blessed. Hallelujah. And you, you all have a blessed day. And may God bless you, keep you, uh, make his grace shine upon you. Uh, I'm not, I don't remember all of it, but he would give you peace and that our eyes would be open to him and to him only. Amen. Love you all. You be blessed and you be safe. Bye.